inclusive society for all. To ensure adequate dissemination of information to the ethnic minority community, a leaflet on those meshes was produced in six ethnic minority languages and widely distributed. Indeed, this package of meshes was well received by non-governmental organizations which are champions for the welfare of ethnic minorities in Hong Kong. In terms of education, the government endeavors to facilitate ethnic minority students' early adaptation of the local education system and mastery of the Chinese language. We have started implementing the Chinese language curriculum second language learning framework in primary and secondary schools from the 2014-15 school year with a view to helping non-Chinese speaking students, notably the ethnic minorities, to overcome the difficulties of learning Chinese as a second language. The ultimate aim is to bridge these students to mainstream Chinese language classes. It is encouraging that initial evaluating findings indicate that the school-based meshes have produced some positive outcome. Non-Chinese speaking students in general have shown more progress in reading and writing than before. But these same findings also confirm a phenomenon that I'm sure we all agree, and that is, if one starts learning a language at a young age, it is more likely that one can master the language much better. Therefore, the government will, upon the implementation of free quality kindergarten education policy, provide additional assistance for kindergartens and meeting a cluster of non-Chinese speaking students. Besides, to facilitate ethnic minority students' academic and career pursuit in future, we introduce the applied learning Chinese courses at senior secondary levels for non-Chinese speaking students to provide them with an additional channel to acquire an alternative recognized qualification. The vocational Chinese language courses for non-Chinese speaking school leavers will also be launched by the second quarter of this year to enhance their capability and confidence in Chinese and help them obtain recognized qualifications. In terms of employment, we strive to ensure that people from different ethnic groups enjoy equal access to job opportunities as others, both in the public and private sectors. As far as government jobs are concerned, the government had comprehensively reviewed and where suitable, without undermining the satisfactory performance of duties, adjusted the Chinese language proficiency requirements and recruitment formats of very relevant government jobs. I'm delighted to see more and more ethnic minority faces in the civil service, particularly for some grades in the disciplinary forces, such as the Correctional Services Department. Ethnic minorities are also engaged as police community liaison assistants to enhance liaison with the ethnic minority community. Today, there are 15 police community liaison assistant positions in 14 police districts. In the private sector, special efforts have been made, for example, in training programs in construction industry in order to facilitate the ethnic minorities to play a part in our infrastructure projects. On community outreach, we now provide funding grants for a total of six centers and two sub-centers, delivering a series of support services for ethnic minorities across the territory, with a view to facilitating their integration into the community. We are also planning for a TV documentary series this year to help the public understand the cultures and customs of ethnic minorities so as to overcome barriers and to promote inclusiveness. In addition, the Hong Kong Police Force, through the Junior Police Corps, helps nourish the ethnic minority young people's leadership skills and instill positive values through JBC activities and training. The JBC has a total of 3,500 ethnic minority members as at the end of last year, significantly increased from 1,900 in the year 2014. Of course, we need the support of all sectors of the community to complement the government's efforts in helping ethnic minorities fully integrate into society. It is therefore encouraging 
to see think tanks such as the Subban Foundation propel studies and researchers on the situation of ethnic minorities in Hong Kong and make recommendations for consideration by government bureaus and departments. I would also like to thank Shalini for her dedication in promoting the welfare of ethnic minorities, in particular women and children, and her persistent efforts in advocating corporate social responsibility. In particular, I welcome the launch of the diversity list which introduces us with ethnic minority friends who are interested in serving on government boards and committees. Our advisory and statutory bodies serve the important objectives of engaging the public and getting the best possible advice in the early stage of policy making and in the performance of various statutory or executive functions. In making appointments to our advisory and statutory bodies, we are minded to get the most suitable candidates from a wide cross-section of the community. Each appointment is made on the merits of the individual, echoing what Shalini has said. I'm sure she is not expecting me to introduce positive discrimination, but really to draw from this talent list on merit. Taking into account the candidate's ability, expertise, experience, integrity and commitment to public service. And having due regard to the functions and nature of business of the board or committee concerned. We would also ensure providing equal opportunities to all people, including people from different ethnic groups. Over the years, we have already had quite some notable examples of experienced and competent non-Chinese individuals serving in various boards and committees to show the ethnic diversity of such appointments. For example, we have Mr. Amir Ali Nasi, an Indian, and Mr. Kama Minhas, a Pakistani sitting on the Equal Opportunities Commission. Ms. Aruna Guran, a Nepalese sitting on the Women's Commission, and Mr. Vivek Mabubani, an Indian, sitting on the Commission on Youth. And I'm pleased that Shalini herself is currently a member of the Transport Advisory Committee and the Business Facilitation Advisory Committee. I'm sorry to say that perhaps all these names make up only the 0.4% <laughs> that Shalini has just counted for us. They are all good team players who provide useful advice and assistance to the respective advisory and statutory bodies they serve. With today's launch of the diversity list, I'm sure more capable ethnic minority individuals will be appointed to our advisory and statutory bodies thereby enabling us to consider policies and make decisions with the perspectives of ethnic minority community in mind. But I want this not only to be embraced by the Chief Secretary for Administration herself, so Shalini, please give me um, at least 13 copies of these uh, diversity lists so that I may share with each of my 13 uh, principal official colleagues who are heading government bureaus nominating individuals to sit on boards and committees under their respective uh, purview. Persons interested in service are also welcome to nominate yourselves. So you may put, up, put forward your, your name to the Home Affairs Bureau for inclusion in a central personality index for consideration by relevant bureaus and departments. With all these ongoing measures, together with the unfailing support from all ethnic minority organizations who are represented this afternoon, and non-governmental organizations in Hong Kong, I am confident that more and more members from the ethnic groups will be able to unlock the potential and contribute to our city, a city with racial harmony. Last but not the least, may I take this opportunity to wish you and your family good health and abundant happiness. Thank you very much.